60 seconds. Oh my god, look who's come back. Speaking of the drum. Mom, mom, mom. Oh, if it isn't my favorite okay. bad penny, how are you? <laughs> Let's switch it on. Hey there, this is Raul. It's Friday night, and I had to give up my tickets to Lord of the Dance because you wanted to play You Don't Know Jack. How many people do we have playing? Very good. Player one, can I get your name, please? Yes, 45 seconds. Camera. Player two, it's your turn now. Ask me how to end the show. Oh, yeah. Hey, I need to know if you want to play. All right, thanks. It's strong. 30 seconds. All right, fine. Let's get this game rocking. Come on, Mavis. They're ready to go. Player two, take your pick. Question one is taped before a live studio audience. I believe this one is called, That Had to Be a Huge Placenta. We're playing for $3,000 this time. Okay, we all know where babies come from, right? And in case you haven't heard, it's when two people care for each other very, very much. And they, you know what? That's not my job. Onward. Which of the following best explains where the ABC network came from? Asexual reproduction by CBS, the love child of Dumont and DuPont, C-section performed on NBC, or given up for adoption by the Air Force? Player two, grab it! Gotta answer it, player Asexual? You must be thinking of murder, she wrote. Oh, God, I just turned myself off. Player two, falls in your court. Take a sh Oh, look, Charles. Someone left this basket on the doorstep. Now, what could be wrapped up in this blank? Let me show you what I would have picked. In 1941, the FCC ruled that no one could own more than one network. So, NBC's Blue Network was sold and became ABC. Which explains how, to this day, Willard Scott just knows when Ted Koppel is in pain. Let's have a category, player one. This category is known as Diploma Tick Immunity. 1,000 bucks if you get it. So, uh, did you know that as of 1997, Peter Jennings is a bit short of finishing a degree in school? Suppose Peter Jennings decided to go back and finish his schooling. Based on the degree he would receive, what would be the best song to play at his graduation party? Rock and Roll High School, Beauty School Dropout, Calling Dr. Love, or Send Lawyers Guns and Money. Player two, go! Peter Jennings never finished high school. So let that be a lesson to all you kids out there. If you don't finish high school, you're going to be brilliant, rich, and famous. Now hit the books. Category time, player two. This is question three. This one's called Buy Sex, This Sex, Product Sex. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Okay, so the title character from Rhoda is not exactly known for her successes when it comes to men, so maybe she needs some tips from her mother. Considering the actress who plays Rhoda's mother and the ad she's famous for appearing in, what might she advise Rhoda to do to improve her dating life? Don't squeeze the Charmin. Buy Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Take it off, take it all off, or just do it. This is going down on your permanent record. Player two, now's the time. Take, Take it off. Take it all off. We are talking about your score, right? Okay. I could have given you some cash if you picked this one. Nancy Walker, who played Rhoda's mother, is famous for playing Rosie in the Bounty commercials. Yeah, that's the first thing I want to know about a woman. What kind of paper towels she buys? Player one, what are we doing? Hey. All right, give it up for moving on up the East Coast. You're looking at $3,000 on this one. Let's see how you handle this one. Suppose George Jefferson were to make a special TV appearance on the show Wings. Considering his name, what would be the best advice to give him? Don't marry Faye or you'll die. Don't play checkers against Helen. Don't eat Joe's cooking or you'll barf. Or don't fly if Brian's your pilot.
You want to see what the smart money says? <laughs> on Wings, all of Faye's ex-husbands were named George, and they all died. And if he ever does go on the show, he can offer Helen some advice with her diner. For instance, fish don't fry in the kitchen and beans don't burn on the grill. Player one, what's up? The category is O-I-C-U-R-M-T. I got $2,000 says you don't know this one. And now, your question. Considering the infamous Dateline NBC scandal, what would have been the most appropriate title for the show that night? Dateline IRS, Dateline TNT, Dateline PCP, or Dateline WWF? Player two, grab it. Oh, as if cheating on your taxes is illegal. Player one, you can tell his name is Stone Phillips, not Stoned Phillips. Uh, does this ring a bell? To dramatize a story about dangerous fuel tanks on certain GM trucks, producers of Dateline NBC rigged an explosion to simulate a fiery crash. The show wasn't canceled, but if it had been, I'm sure the producers could have found work with Dateline IRA. Pick a category, player one. Let's take a look at TV for the deaf. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. Hey kids, it's howdy duty time. If Schoolhouse Rock decided to use other TV shows with exclamation marks in their titles to illustrate interjections, which of the following shows would not be eligible? Jeopardy, What's Happening, Good Morning America, or Shazam! Player two, you're getting screwed. Let's give something back. No, what's happening needs two exclamation points. One for each of Rerun's breasts. Player one. There's no exclamation point in Good Morning America! Good morning, America! It's 7.15. It looks like a beautiful day. Let's check the traffic! Yeah! Player one, why don't you give me a category? Uh-oh, fresh slut tits eyesore. It is time for Grab hold of this gibberish category. Overheard in the Garden of Eden. What do you say to 5,000 bucks to start this gibberish question off? Now here's the deal. The more time you take, the less cash you get. Okay, prick up your ears and tell me what TV show does this phrase rhyme with? Grip easy, Eve, sit, you're hot, and try to ignore that punctuation. First clue, it features strange stories. Player two, go for it, type in... Yeah, it's a pretty ballsy title, but not nearly as much as the original. Ripley's We Don't Give a Crap What You Think About It. Your call, player two. For your enjoyment, men who scratch themselves in public. You get it right, I'm giving you $1,000. So, have you ever been at a baseball game where the crowd starts taunting the pitcher by saying, We want a pitcher, not a belly itcher! Just trust me, it happens, okay? Because he's a former big league pitcher, which of these characters, by default, must not be a belly itcher? Thomas Magnum, Oscar Madison, George Costanza, or Sam Malone? What do you say we check out the right answer? Before he started serving pitchers of beer, Sam Mayday Malone was a relief pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. So I guess he's not a belly itcher. But I hear he is known to stand behind the bar spitting and touching himself. 